so today's project we're gonna get rid of all these uh, vacuum lines as you can see there's there's about I don't know 200 vacuum lines connected to this thing I mean they go everywhere and they all come back to that guy right there which would be the uh, like a vacuum canister as you can see they're extremely brittle they just they just kind of crumble in your hand there's not much left of them I mean there's there's what's going on with that but uh we're gonna eliminate those vacuum lines except for the one that goes to the distributor down there it comes in from the back side um, it needs that so that it can do its vacuum advance and all that kind of stuff and it'll run proper when you're going down the road the rest of it is for emissions this is a 1985 so um, their idea back then was to run dual spark plugs and a whole lot of uh, vacuum controlled items that really don't do much of anything uh, the second set of spark plugs I believe is solely there to burn exhaust fumes um, and you could disconnect it and it'll still run the engine will still run because your main four I believe are on this side they're, they're right down here and your I, don't, I think those are the exhaust ones right there I'm not sure we'll figure it out eventually but uh, those are staying the rest of the stuff is gonna go though so um, here we go let's get this started first project of the show now first things first you're probably wondering why I'm just about on my knees As a matter of fact I could, I could probably sit on the ground and work on this truck it's bagged and it's it's laying on the frame right now so it, it's really really low but uh, first things first we're gonna start taking off uh, everything that's in my way so I can get down to the carburetor and see where I'm going with everything and that's gonna be the air cleaner um, pretty much that's it but this air cleaner is bolted down to the to the valve cover as well so they really didn't want this thing to fall off so it's kind of a pain in the butt to take it out, but this is what we're gonna do. We'll get started with that. And uh, here we go. Yeah, my battery's not tied down either. Surprised this thing's made it this long. Normally these things are like the first thing to you know fall on the ground, disappear, or whatever, but this is the original. It's got the little swivel on it and it's, it's got a rubber gasket still in it. Pretty nice. I painted this like eight years ago. <laughs> Held up for a little while. We would have got started on this earlier, but it was freezing out and I don't like the cold. I'm not made for cold weather, so I don't do too good with that. But um, before this thing was parked, you know, I did a really good job of, of taking care of it. You know, I always had clean filters, good oil. Uh, it always ran synthetic in it. Uh, you know, the best, the best of the best. But it has been sitting for a long time. I pulled the dipstick out, and the oil seemed to be like um, it was like molasses. So I'm definitely gonna have to do an oil change on it eventually. But for the time being, it'll do just fine. Speaking of oil changes, uh, if you look behind me over here, the daily driver's got its hood popped up because uh, it drinks about a quart of oil every gas tank for some reason. It's a turbo, and they try to say that that's like the nature of the beast with those things. And once you soup them up a little bit, they kind of drink a lot of oil. Um, I don't know. Maybe the engine's getting weak. I don't know. I mean, it rips, so we'll see. When it blows up, it blows up. Let me grab some tools. So after about 13 hours of searching, I finally found the right socket. It's a 12 millimeter. And it appears that there's only one here on the top. I also uh, stopped at about 100 different stores and got six vacuum caps. Seems like that's something that nobody keeps in stock anymore. They're pretty hard to find. That's out of the way. Stick it in here. Try not to lose anything as I go along. These have got to be my favorite pair of pliers I've ever bought. The snap-on guy got me. I walked into the truck and he, he was like, hey, you want to see something cool? Try to steal this penny out of my pliers. And he gave me another set of pliers and we fought and fought and fought. And I about pulled him off of his feet. Not that I'm strong, but it was just, you know, we're in a tiny little truck yanking back and forth. 
and uh, needless to say, I bought me a pair of $80 pliers. I mean, they're they're really, they're kind of pricey, but I use these things all the time now. So now I'm like, well, they were well worth it. They do everything. I mean, I use them for everything. Like I, I would eat dinner with them if I could. I mean, in order to justify all the money I spent on them. Makes everything easy. So that's loose. This should just pop right off. Oh, nope, I forgot one more. It's been a long time since I've touched this thing. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a quick before and after so you can see how bad this thing actually runs before I finish taking everything apart. I'm gonna get the, we'll get this off of here first and then we'll go from there. There we go. I guess this can go with that because that's coming off of there too. All this is gonna be gone. these things aren't even connected anymore so I'll go ahead and cap that off while I'm here not too sure how you're supposed to select these guys if you just kind of find the one that fits and go with it there's supposed to be a certain amount of tightness on there I'm not quite sure but if there if there is something let me know yeah like that's way too loose now, I watched somewhere where they said that they were all like 5 sixteenths and 7 sixteenths or something like that. I can't measure that high, so I don't. I just kind of stick it in there until I find one that doesn't fall out or off. That's good. Back down there. There's another one back there on the carburetor. That's off. I'd laugh if it started running good all of a sudden. Probably should have done the before thing. It's my first real video, so we're, we're figuring it out as we go along. I'm gonna go grab the keys real quick and uh, get this thing started. I wanna do a demonstration on how this thing runs and unfortunately you need the key. The key was in the house. Let 
I'm either gonna make it run or I'm gonna set myself on fire. We'll figure it out. Probably set myself on fire after that one. So that's what the problem was this actual vacuum cap that i sealed off right there was literally where it was losing its oomph i guess to make it run now it's gonna make a whole bunch of noise but uh i'm gonna go ahead and continue on with all the rest of the vacuum delete now that we figured that out Now this truck sat for quite a few years in Florida, so that's where you're going to see a lot of those um, mud dabbers and things like that. And that's kind of why I'm doing it right now, working on this while it's so cold. Because anything that sits in Florida for any period of time uh, becomes a home to all kinds of bugs and critters that I really don't want to mess around with. You know, they're kind of poisonous. And here in Pennsylvania, we don't have any of that stuff, so I like to keep it that way. And when I work on stuff, I will definitely do it when it's cold for now I'm sure everything's died by now but uh it definitely got really cold over the past couple days as you can see there's a, mil a million extra vacuum lines here none of these are required I think I'm gonna cut Slowly but surely, it's coming out. Now there's another sensor on the inside of that fender wall right there that uh, does, I would assume, nothing. So we will disconnect it and get rid of that too while we're at it. Part of this is also gonna help later on down the road when I do the, uh, clear out the whole engine bay. I'm gonna do a firewall and bunch of other stuff to it so when we get to that point I'm not gonna want any of this stuff here anyway now up here in Pennsylvania they have emissions tests and you know I'm, I'm, I'm not a 
I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of emissions. Not 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 at all. Um, especially because they test your brand new vehicle and they make vehicles like this one exempt. Now, if you really think about it in technology, the way it's advanced, the new vehicles probably have the least amount of emissions compared to these old guys. I mean, I don't know if you saw the plume of smoke that came out of this one when it started, but uh, you know, these guys burn a lot of gas. They, uh, this truck doesn't even have a catalytic converter. Um, it never had one since I bought it. So, in Florida, that's okay. But here, that's not okay. Uh, they want you to have, you know, the catalytic converter. They want you to have all your emissions and stuff. And the part that I don't understand about it is, while they're so concerned about your emissions on your vehicles, the majority of the houses out here burn fuel all winter long to keep the house warm. But I don't see catalytic converters or mufflers or anything like that on the houses, you know, and I don't see anybody running around, hey, you need your, your house needs an emissions test. But I would assume that those probably put out a good amount of emissions into the air and it's consistent, you know? I mean, my heater will run all night long, kicking on and off, as opposed to my car will only run for however many minutes my trip is, you know? And then I'm done. I get to where I'm going and I'm done. Shut it off. So, I don't know. I don't know what the, what's behind all that, but it is what it is. Whether you agree with it or not, it's gonna be there. Guys, good Christmas gift for the lady. Uh, if she's looking for some diamonds, these are diamond cut. So yeah, diamond cut tips, you know, I mean, Probably cheaper than a diamond, I don't know. For that matter, ladies that are watching, you want a great gift for your man, these are awesome. Also another snap-on tool. One of the few, I only have a couple snap-on tools so far. I'm still building my tool collection, but, uh, or building it back up. But yeah, these are pretty handy, I really like them. They work very well, as you can see. I mean, I could grip just about anything with them, and it pulls it right out. probably eventually just take this out and cap it off um, you could see right down in there that guy right there will be just unscrewed and capped off I'm hoping but pardon the sound effects go. we're still working on all this ready to go now ready to go there we go so just got to kind of talk to it Those are good. Moving right along. have some real good times with this truck. There we go, that looks good. That is my fuel hood, so I can't get rid of that guy. Yeah, I remember the first year we took it to Slam Fest. The airbags were leaking on the way down and it kept on You'd start off driving, and then after about 10 minutes or so, you'd hear a scrape every time you hit a little bump. It kind of make you nervous because it was, you know, and you'd have to hit the switch and air the front back up. That was a trip, I'll tell you. 
Well, anyway, of course I get the wrong size vacuum hose, so that's another issue. But my gosh, this thing's hell on your back. Being bent over working on it, and I'm short. We're getting somewhere. This is the only important vacuum line really on the whole system is the uh, vacuum advance for the carburetor and the uh, distributor. So, gotta find a spot for it. That thing on there. If at first you don't succeed, try another spot. Of course, I bought the wrong size vacuum line, so I'm gonna have to make do with what I have left for now. And then we will uh, switch it up here. Later. I guess this will work. Or I can do it right up under here. I kind of like that better. I might just do that. Now later when I get the right size replacement hose, which I probably should have took some of this with me to the parts store when I went, but you know, I'd rather just wing it. It's more fun that way. Just wanted to kind of capture some of the stuff that I took out of here. As you can see, there's a ton of uh, vacuum lines and fittings and whatnots, and it doesn't need any of them. Runs great without it. All right, so we've changed all the vacuum lines, uh, but we capped them all off. We fixed the only one that we actually needed, which was the one for the distributor. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and give it another try. We're going to start it and let it idle and see what it could do you know see how well it idles so uh cross your fingers hopefully we did this right those are going to end up in the fan somewhere these things is not like the other thing I remember from back in the day this carburetor used to always come loose and suck a bunch of air underneath it so let's try that and see if that ain't the problem Still going at it with this thing. Got it figured out. Uh, it's got a real bad misfire. So I've gone through the ignition and popped the cap off here and realized that the hole inside of the cap is just corroded and it's in pretty bad shape. It's been sitting for a while. So I'm gonna try to scrape off the contacts inside of there just for now to make it hopefully get a better spark. So that's what I'm doing right now. Can't really see real good, but inside of there, there's a lot of white buildup on all the terminals cap back on and we'll give this thing a try. Maybe that may get better. You don't want to over tighten it either because you take a chance of cracking the cap. And then all the fun's over. Yeah, slug. Well, let's give it another shot, see what it does. losing some weight. Everything looks good. Yep.
so check it out. So after fighting with this thing for just about ever, I figured out why it was running so rough. That little guy right there. And you can see I kind of rigged it up. I'm going to have to get a spring or something in here uh, to control it. But uh, this guy would just kind of flop all the way open and it would start misfiring and just running all kinds of crazy. And I'm sure it has something to do with this right here that controls it. but. You know that's too much science right there so i do plan on ripping this carburetor off and putting a weber on there so for now i'll just get a new spring put a spring inside of here uh, maybe there's one that's supposed to already be there i don't know if you guys know go ahead and put something down in the comments let me know what you think but it does run great as you can see in the video uh, i did a pretty smoky burnout well, that's going to do it for today. Um, join me next week as we fix the valves and all the leaky air fittings in the back so that we can get this thing uh, to sit on its own suspension. Uh, I got a bunch of new fittings and stuff for it, so we're going to be replacing lines and things like that. Um, and then maybe we'll take it for a ride. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But uh, see you guys next week.